Yavatmal, a district in the state of Maharashtra in India that has become symbolic of the hardships of the Indian farmer. Where the farmer has to deal with lack of proper irrigation along with regular droughts, lack of timely technical know-how and reducing productivity has plunged farmers into rising debt. To add to the farmer's woes, the principal crop here, cotton, is reeling under the impact of a pest against which the farmer's efforts have come to naught. In such dire circumstances, a triumvirate consisting of one of the country's leading agricultural institutes, the State Agriculture Department and the country's premier agrochemical manufacturer has come together to address these concerns. Let's find out how these efforts have fared directly from the farmers in Yavatmal themselves. I had sown around 20 acres of cotton last year. Even at a standard average yield of 10 quintals per acre, I should have had a harvest of 200 quintals. What I got was only 30 quintals. I could not even realize that my crop was under attack by the pink ballworm. The balls seemed fine, but at the time of picking, the infestation became clear. There was nothing I could do then. I was really concerned seeing the level of infestation and had almost decided not to sow cotton the following year. The issue was with our management of the pest. What chemical to use, when to use it, these critical points were not known to us. Because of the losses suffered last year, I had all but decided to shift to soya bean this year entirely. When we approached these villages initially, there was almost no response to our efforts as the farmers were very dejected with their losses and were reluctant to even continue cotton cultivation. In our village, people from the Punjab Rao University and UPL had come over. In Akola, there is a village called Kolhed Gomase and in Yavatmal, there is one called Saikheda. We selected these two villages and selected farmers for interventions. We selected Sai Khera Khurd in Yavatmal first as we wanted to choose a location where the management of pink ballworm had become extremely difficult last year. They encouraged us to sow cotton again and assured us that they would help us in controlling pink ballworm. We deployed solutions that the university had recommended for the control of pink ballworm in this village. The idea was for the university and UPL to join hands and connect various techniques for management that had been researched. So as to make the farmer confident in the efficacy of these techniques and make them believe that pink ballworm can in fact be controlled. When the UPL people first came to us, and said we should utilize their know-how and follow their recommended spray which would control the pest. We thought this was not going to end well for us. I sowed 10 acres of cotton. I told them that we were doing four sprays which was still ineffective and inquired how their recommended single spray could make any difference. Pink ballworm requires integrated pest management techniques. The first control adopted was mechanical which necessitates burning the last crop stubble. The second thing that we did was cultural control. Using deep ploughing, we neutralized the pupa of the pink ballworm nestled beneath the soil. The third thing we did was to employ pheromone traps of delta traps. These traps alert the farmer to the presence of pink ballworm in the field. The delta traps were very effective in trapping and killing the male insects. I think that was a very key step in stemming the spread of the pink ballworm.
they used to do two to three surveillance rounds in our village and we followed what they asked us to do. And after that, we employed the biological control through the use of trichogramma cards. This is an endoparasitoid that lays eggs within the ballworm eggs and destroys them. Finally, we used chemical control methods where we used Virat and Ulala as the principal chemicals. I could still see a few insects and was asked to use Virat as a control mechanism. They gave us a proper guidance in how to do the spray and what chemicals to use. This year, we have done all sprays using machinery only. We wanted to ensure that the farmer would not be exposed to chemicals while spraying insecticides. To that effect, we have arranged not one or two, but a hundred new machines for effective spraying on the entire field. Because of the mechanized spray, the variety has fared much better in quality and the growth at this stage is also now as per standards expected. And just like Virat Kohli the cricketer, this Virat scores against the opposition and ensures that its own team is safe and secure. Because of their guidance, I had sown cotton. I can say that this was one of the best decisions I took because today each plant has 50 to 60 balls already. The fungicide was so effective that there wasn't a single incidence of any fungal attack, leading to very clean balls. There is not a single pink ballworm in the crop either. They had taken a challenge that in one or two sprays, we would make sure that at least 80% of an average healthy yield would be available. Looking at the crop now, I can see this challenge being fulfilled. People from the company in Mumbai, people from Akola University, people from nearby villages all had come to visit our fields and see the kind of growth and quality our plants had achieved. Everyone agreed that the crop stand and quality was fantastic. This has significantly reduced the cost of inputs for the crop. Earlier, I used to apply DAP at the time of sowing, costing Rs. 1300 to 1400 per bag, followed by urea, which cost Rs. 400 per bag in an acre. This was followed by a mix of magnesium and sulphate that cost Rs. 900 per acre. In total, it used to cost me Rs. 3000 per acre. This year, UPL recommended that I use 12, 32, 16, costing only Rs. 1300 per acre, resulting in a saving of Rs. 2000 per acre on fertilizer. Next year too, we will use the machine for spraying. This will cost me only Rs 100 per acre, giving me a cost saving of Rs 150 per acre. From the Prime Minister of the country to Chief Minister, everybody has the noble vision of doubling farmer income. Reduction of input cost is an essential part of accomplishing this mission. In my earlier practice, I used to do three sprays, costing Rs 10,000 each. The total cost was Rs 30,000, while this year, I have done only one spray, costing Rs 1,000. This has resulted in saving of rupees 29,000 per acre and which has made the biggest difference in savings. I used to have manual de-weeding done at the cost of rupees 4,500 to 5,000 per acre against which I have used Dost Super this year at the cost of just rupees 100 per acre, saving me rupees 4,400 in one operation only. Overall, this has provided excellent savings of rupees 50 to 60,000. Farmers here are excited and are very hopeful that their yields are going to be double than what they were last year. This year, UPL had adopted our village, which they can't do every year. But this year itself, because of their interventions, the yield of cotton has surpassed all expectations. We had never believed this would be possible even in our wildest dreams. Last year, the balls of cotton were such that there used to be only one healthy clump out of four in each ball. This year, each ball has yielded the full four clumps, making even the picking of the cotton easier and faster. Against an average yield of seven to eight quintals per acre, 
This year, we have got 15 to 16 quintals average yield per acre. Last year, the yield was so less that we could not even fill a single room with the harvested cotton. This year, we have filled two rooms already and are probably going to need a third. This means a doubling to tripling of yield. This year, the weight of the balls is much higher. The lint of the crop is also as white as snow, indicating superior quality. I could not believe it. I have actually doubled my profits. Earnings are going to see a jump of at least four to five times. Given the income I have received, I will send my child to Yavatmal for education and schooling next year. I'm pretty sure that I will be able to take care of my debt. I'm also thinking of buying some assets, maybe a four-wheeler. Let's see. Because we are connected with farmers at field level, we can say with pride that the farmer is very intelligent and wise. He is always open to learning new techniques and methods. Today, what you see is that yields have gone up tremendously and farmers are now talking about sowing cotton every year. I think the biggest achievement of this mission has been to turn people around from giving up on the cotton crop to resolving to sow it year on year. I have a firm belief that if the farmer, the industry and the government work together, our nation will be able to get rid of poverty and villages will have ample prosperity. The farmers are very happy. Earlier, the situation was such that they were only getting four to five quintals per acre and could not even recover the cost of inputs. This year, the situation has turned around completely and we have seen that their homes are full of the harvested cotton. 10 to 12 quintals average yield per acre and that too in a rain-fed condition has been achieved. The market prices have also improved greatly. The situation has changed from low prices and less yields to higher prices and better yields. The smiles and the delight that can be seen on their faces is a matter of pride, both for the university and for UPM. I don't think there can be a better gift for us.